again, everyone. It's me, Madam Macabre, and welcome to another video. So, for today's video, I have something that's a little less on the whole paranormal, spooky aspect, and is more of a personal video, but it still kind of, still kind of fits with the theme. See, your girl has been up to it again, and I might have done something that has even further cemented my status as a local neighborhood cryptid in with the neighborhood kids. See, I have always really loved Corvids, which are essentially like the crow and raven family. And I think they're really intelligent creatures, they're very loyal, they love their families, they're very fascinating. And another really cool thing about crows and ravens is you can actually befriend them if you're willing to put in a little work and a little time. And I just so happened to notice that in the surrounding trees of my apartment community, we happen to have a murder of crows. And I thought, hmm, this might be a little opportunity. So I'm on the top floor and I have a balcony. It's a pretty good sized one. It's like six by 10 feet, I, I don't know. But it, it's a fairly decent sized balcony and I, it's got wide flat railing that birds can land on if they want to. I always put tons of bird feeders and all sorts of things out there. I'm like your regular Snow White. I got critters coming everywhere. They just, they this. I got a family of pileated woodpeckers. They're huge if you've never seen one. They're like pterodactyls, but I'm, I'm getting off track. Today we are talking about my crows. So, as I mentioned, I noticed there was a family of crows living in the nearby trees, and I decided I would like to see if I could perhaps befriend them and train them to come to me over a period of time. Now, mind you, this is still a work in progress. I'm still not where I want to be yet, but I have made immense strides with these little guys. So essentially when I made my move, I noticed that about four or five of the crows from the murder had landed in the grass down on the ground level below my balcony. And I decided, okay, well, the first thing I can do is, you know, go outside, get them to get used to my face. Cause a crow will remember your face for I think up to two years and they can tell their family about you. Even if the family's never seen you, there's like this crazy documentary, like the university of Washington did on crows that they remember your face for two years. So be careful what you do to them. Remember good or bad. <laughs> and if, if you're mean to them and you get dive bombed by a seemingly unrelated crow, they told their friends and they're coming for you. Anyway, so I go out, I let them see my face, I toss them at the time, I tossed them some sliced up deli meat, some ham. Now the interesting thing with crows is they're omnivores and they actually vastly prefer meat to anything else you give them. If you notice crows watching you when you have a picnic or whatever, they will eat the bread of the sandwich if you toss it to them, but they would much rather have that slice of turkey from the inside. So they, they love meat, they love protein. That is something that not only do they enjoy, but it's much better for them than nutritionless bread. It just fills their stomach and doesn't give them much nutrition, but meat, good for them. Also, you can do dried corn and I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. There's lots of different things you can, you can give birds that's healthier for them, but crows love meat. They just adore it. So I had the deli meat. I had sliced it up in like the little pieces like you'll get in like chef salads and had started tossing it down to them, making sure that they see my face. They know I'm tossing them food. And I decided to try giving a whole classical conditioning thing a try, see how well that works. So as I go out and as I'm tossing them the food, I decide to pick a pattern of noises to call them in. So generally when I'm calling the crows down, I'll do this, like a, a click, 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 followed by a whistle. And they've started to associate that with me coming out with food. You'll notice, yeah, you can't really see her off camera, but you'll notice how you got uh, Artemis sat upright real fast. Cause Artemis also really likes deli meat. And uh, whenever she hears that noise, even though it's calling the crows, she comes running like, where's mine mom? I would like some too. So not only does it call in the crows, but it calls in the cats. Anyway, so first day I do this, they're kind of all apprehensive of me. They don't want to get near me, but they'll gladly take the food. But they just, you can tell the way they're turning their heads and like swiveling and staring. They are like scanning me in, <laughs> like hard scrutiny, trying to figure me out. Well, a couple days pass, I don't see them again. And then another day passes. And this time I see two crows out there. 
and one of them, he looks like he's got some kind of leg injury or a growth or something because his feet have like this grayish white substance on them and he can't walk as well as the other crows. And then the other one was just fine, so I'm assuming it might be one from the family that is injured and the other healthy crow is sort of like his chaperone. That way, when the injured one feeds, the, the one that's uninjured can sort of be a sentinel, a lookout, and let his brother know when it's time to go. So I go to my kitchen, I get more of the deli ham, I go out, I do the click and whistle again, and I start tossing the, the ham down to him. They, they start eating it, and once again, they start scanning me, doing the thing. But they're getting it, like, I had to throw it way out the first time for them to take it. Now I'm throwing it, and they're coming a little bit closer, and they're taking it. Well, essentially, fast forward about a month solid of me consistently feeding the birds, doing the clicking and the whistling, never being mean to them, always being very kind, using a very kind, soft voice when I'm speaking to them. They start, these two in particular, every now and then I'll get more members of the murder, but these two boys would consistently keep coming back. And I'll actually show some pictures of them. Uh, the two of them I ended up naming Hoogan and Moonin, like Odin's ravens, and I shortened it because, you know, those formal names, I ended up calling them Huey and Mooney. So they come just about every day now. It started out gradually, you know, they'd get closer and closer. Well, after enough time happens to pass, I come up one morning, I open the blinds, first day's light, and I have two crows sitting on the railing of my balcony, staring in the window, waiting expectantly for me. And I was surprised, like, oh my gosh, they, they came so close. So sure enough, I run to the kitchen. What I've started doing is because it's cheaper than deli meat is I've started getting packs of hot dogs and uh, specifically turkey hot dogs. They, they're not a fan of beef, picky prima donnas. It's my fault, I've spoiled them, but they specifically want turkey hot dogs. So I will slice them in half and then chop them up so they're smaller bite-sized pieces for the birds. Uh, now, now my regular shopping lists include getting just a, a pack of turkey hot dogs because these boys are so spoiled. But <laughs> I get the hot dog, I bring it out. Of course, when I open the door, they, they fly to the nearby trees because, you know, that freaks them out. Uh, and then they, they wait. And then I would toss, you know, toss the hot dog pieces down. They'd fly down to the ground below. And, you know, they, they still weren't super comfortable, like, taking food from me. And even to this day, they still won't take it out of my hand. I'm working towards that eventually, but I'm happy with the pace we are progressing at because it went from them not even being anywhere near close to me to literally being right below the balcony. And most recently, they have started waiting for me. When I'm out there, they'll actually wait for me to throw food. Uh, the way I've got the balcony is the, the balcony sticks out from the apartment like this. Then there's, you know, the door, and then there's like an overhang and the roof directly because I'm the top floor. Well, where the gutters are, it's like right above the balcony. Like I could reach up and touch it and they will land up there. Like within, I could reach out and grab at them if I wanted to, but I, I don't because it would freak them out. But they will wait up there while I'm on the balcony now and they'll watch me toss the food. They'll fly down and get it, fly back up. Look at me if I'm not fast enough, like where I, I see it on the plate give me more. And they, they've just gotten closer and closer and it's just really neat that they trust me enough to start getting this close and I'm hopeful that eventually they will just be chill with coming on the balcony with me. And something fun is that the best results I've had so far was on an extremely hot day. It was like 103 degrees which for Washington State where our average temperature is 50 degrees 103 is extremely hot. I know people from other states like to come chiming in like, oh, you think that's hot, that's nothing. It's not nothing for us because our average temperature is 50 degrees. Our bodies are not used to that. It's easier to live in heat when you're adapted to it. We're adapted to the cold, so when it gets that hot, our whole systems are thrown out of whack, as well as our poor wildlife up here. Our wildlife is not used to it, especially the crows in all black. And I could see him out there uh, the morning, this morning where it was 103 degrees. He was waiting on my railing and he had his mouth open and was panting. So I actually came in. I have a, a wide, shallow bowl and I uh, went ahead and filled it with water and then I got the hot dog tray ready. 
and unfortunately like I couldn't just throw the food out like I normally do for him to you know feel comfortable enough to not have to be right next to me while I'm out there because the the demon screamer children were out there and they had this large dog. The dog's not people aggressive, but it will chase any wildlife that's on the ground. And it's too big of a dog for the little kids out there. And more often than not, it breaks loose because and then it's running around and they're all hee hee hee. Then the mom or dad has to come out and wrangle the dog. Like they're lucky this is a gated community or that dog be gone down the highway. We're, we're close to a highway here. That would be game over. So I don't know, it's not my dog. So it may not be my place to speak. But, uh, I raise my eyebrow at your decisions, neighbors. Anyway, so I couldn't throw the food down because there was, you know, he, he wasn't going to be able to go down there, especially because he's injured. Uh, and Huey, Huey is the one that consistently comes more, the one with the hurt feet. Mooney will oftentimes, because I'm at the top floor, there are a lot of pine trees like really close to my building. So there's low branches that are like pretty almost grabbing reach from my balcony. Mooney will wait in the, the branches, like looking, surveying, making sure nothing's coming up. And then Huey will go down and eat. And sometimes if it's safe enough, Mooney will go down and join him. But usually Mooney's up watching Sentinel while uh, Huey's, you know, getting, getting food, which I think is another thing that speaks on the familial loyalty with crows because his priority is making sure that his disabled brother is able to get enough good food to eat. Because like I mentioned, I'm not sure what is wrong with Huey's legs. Like that's ultimately gonna be one of my goals to find out when uh, once they finally trust me enough to get close to me because I can't tell. I mean, there may be nothing I can do if it's an actual growth or if it's, you know, some kind of natural thing, but because of the discoloration, it almost makes me wonder if he didn't like land in cement at some point, get something stuck to his legs. And if it is something that can be helped, I would like to be able to eventually help him if he can trust me enough to do that. But for now, like he, he really struggles. He can't land on things as easily because his legs don't work as well. And every time he goes from point A to point B, usually, you know, crows, they hop, hop, hop. He, he can't really do that. His legs don't work well. So he has to fly everywhere he goes and he has to exert a lot more energy. So it's, it's really sweet that uh, his brother is there helping him, making sure he's safe and making sure he's still getting food because some other animals might just leave him to get picked off by the predators, but crows will not do that. Anyway, so seeing that he was in distress, it was hot, it was 103 degrees, he was so tired. What I actually ended up doing is I very slowly slid open the sliding door and I had the food on the plate, I had the water in the other hand and I was talking very softly, it's okay Huey, you know it's me, here I come. And he didn't fly off this time. Mind you, he was on the far side of the balcony from me and I tried to stay as far away from him as I could. I set down the plate of hot dogs and I set down the bowl of water and I very carefully came back inside and I closed the door and then I came over to, to this couch here which has a view, it's across the room but you can still see in plain day out onto the balcony. And I just sat here, he knew I could still see him and he was on the railing and he waited until I sat down and then he went down and from the safety of my balcony he was able to eat the hot dogs, drink the water, and he even actually ended up like sitting in the bowl because it was so hot. So uh, I'm, I'm glad he was able to do that. And I think that was also a big step up in his and Mooney's trust in me. So we'll see where this goes. I'm making good progress with these guys. They don't see me as much of a threat. They're still too wary to come and eat from my hand and be close to me all the time. I think the only reason I was able to get that close to Huey is because he was in dire straits with that heat and he needed food and he needed water. But, uh, cause after that now he still won't, that was the only time I've been able to get that close to him. But I'm, I'm sure over time, as they continue to build their trust in me, I will get to have that opportunity to get close to them. But, uh, as for now, I'm happy with what we have. You know, they're they're both being very brave. And uh, I've got this little added added side effect that I, I didn't quite think through all the way before I get, began this process. Literally, my only motivation in all of this was I really freaking love crows. And if I could befriend them, I thought that'd be super rad. Well, I didn't anticipate the fact that a lot of people are freaked out by crows and ravens. They think they're 
spooky or nuisances or they associate them as omens because generally you see crows being you know related to death and everything and all that so people, people kind of get freaked out by them well lo and behold since i've been classically conditioning these birds i can go out on my balcony click three times and whistle and birds will fly out from the trees like down to where i am then mind you they haven't quite gotten to get it coming right to me yet but we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. For now, I'll settle with them flying from all over the apartment community and settling on the tree that is right next to my balcony. And the children have actually seen this happen a couple times because I go out for the morning to, uh, to, to feed the boys and I do my click and whistle and the, the birds descend and I've seen the kids like, oh. And who knows, who knows what they say when they have their little kid hangouts, meetups and everything, but I'm, I'm sure that can only help further solidify in their minds that uh, I'm the, the spooky cryptid witch lady in that strange apartment over there. Just stay away from her and just watch carefully. Who knows, but you know, I'm just, I accept it. I'm becoming a cryptid, it's fine. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that little story. That's just a little weird thing I have going in, on in my life. It's. Not really like a, a story or advice or something regarding ghosts or whatever. It's it's just me being a weirdo, but I, I thought you guys might enjoy that little glimpse into my eccentricity. Anyway, have you formed any kind of bonds or friendships with birds like this before? Or, cre you know, creatures people don't normally... Like, people are fine with me befriending the woodpeckers. They're fine with me befriending the, the finches and the sparrows. But the second it's crows, suddenly it's creepy and frowned upon. I don't know. But feel free to share your own experiences down below. And I will catch you guys next time with another video. But that is all for today. Until then... Stay creepy.